My name's Andrew Nottage, I'm a leaf demonstration farmer at Russell Smith Farms at College Farm Duxbury in South Cambridgeshire. The fighter back behind me was part of a, a project um, which was completed recently. Um, we wanted to improve the way we were dealing with our, our pesticide washings, our spray washings, um, and also we did a review of the way we were filling the sprayer, the handling area, and also our chemical storage. After considering a number of options, um, we saw we decided on fighter back, which we'd seen working in um, another country, and was the best option for us to deal with improving the way we were disposing of our prey washings. I'm Bill Basford. I'm an independent consultant specialising on biobeds and biofilters. But we're using biobeds and biofilters to actually break down the pesticides so they don't get into our waters the waters around the farm which may eventually be our drinking waters. Yeah, the difference between a fighter back and a biobed biofilter is that this is a closed system. It makes no discharge. The principle of using the fighter back takes the liquid from the bunded spray fill area through a silt trap and then the liquid from a pre-holding tank is pumped then straight into the fighter back. And the fighter back is essentially a concrete box which is holding the mixture of soil and straw and that is important because the microbes in the, the soil are actually helping the natural breakdown of the active ingredients. Right, the liquid coming from the area is actually pumped and then distributed over the fighter back surface of the material by drip irrigation. This is being allowing the distribution to be uniform right across the area of the material to maximise that area in its potential and then the roof over it with an air gap is promoting both radiation input so we've got heat coming in which is assisting evaporation and of course the wind is also moving that uh, material away as it evaporates so we're having no pressure or less pressure on what's coming out of any system. So in fact this is a totally closed system, it's making no discharge and that's its major benefit. So when we were planning our, our review of our spraying operation we, uh, we took the decision that we wanted a covered filling area. So we've moved our sprayer filling area under an existing barn, we built a bunded filling area now to catch any, any spillages. We are then pumping from that into a silt trap, a silt trap into a, another holding tank and on from that the holding tank will be pumped into the fighter back for final treatment of the, of the washings. We recently finished building the fighter back and just filled it with the medium. Now the medium is 70% soil, 30% straw and we loaded that into the fighter back. It was mixed outside and loaded inside with a, a just loading shovel. So over time uh, this will presumably slump a little bit and then we'll then top up with the same mixture. We will then mix the mixture once a year just with a forklift bucket or forklift tines and then at the appropriate time we'll have to renew the mixture with the same mixture again. Now whilst we were designing the, uh, the roof for the fighter back, obviously the roof is keeping rainfall out of the fighter back, keeping our liquid down to, a, to zero um, from rainfall. Uh, I had to think about how we were going to take the roof off for the practicalities of actually filling and remixing the actual medium. Uh, we designed it a sliding roof, so this, this roof behind me does slide and the trickle tape is fixed to that roof. So it'll be a fairly simple case of just sliding the roof back and mixing the substrate with a, a forklift. Throughout the process we have received some expert guidance from a range of organisations, for example catchment sensitive farming. Some of that advice related around the size of the fighter back for example, so we sought advice on um, the location for the fighter back to catch the most amount of wind and the sun to get the evaporation. We chose this location for the fighter back A because it would be good to manage and also it was out of the way of any farming operations. Whilst we were considering the size of the fighter back, we had to provide a number of data for, the, uh, for a computer model to work out how big, the, how big the fighter back needed to be. For example, the amount of spray washings we were planning to use every year and dispose of, and that took into consideration with the temperature in our location within this postcode. To enable us to have a fighter back here on the farm, we applied to the Environment Agency for the appropriate exemptions. To help the cost of building um, the fighter back uh, project, we applied for a grant under Catchment Sensitive Farming. In addition to the grant we received from Catchment Sensitive Farming, as a farming business we've covered the rest of the cost. These included the concrete base, the concrete uh, precast sections you can see behind me, 
the roofing, electrical work and the triple tape. The fight about project has cost more than a conventional fire bed, but as part of our review using integrated fire management and the leaf audit, we can see us giving us some significant advantages over and above a fire bed. It's more substantial design and we haven't got the, the separate area to irrigate the liquid onto. As part of our review to our sprayer handling and filling operation and the installation of the fighter back, I'm confident that we've reduced our risk of any point source pollution on the farm and any negative effects in the environment.